This is an abbreviated web version of Up Close. I'm Stephen I. Weiss. You can see the full version of Up Close on the Jewish channel on cable. In this week's episode, we examine how different perspectives are changing our world. It turns out that a lot of our ideas about support for Israel and America are wrong. I interview Brandeis University professor Theodore Sassoon about his book, The New American Zionism, which shows how things really are changing. But first, the co-host of NPR's On the Media, Bob Garfield, says in a new book, Can't Buy Me Like, that the world is changing for everyone, and that how businesses and organizations act will be subjected to greater scrutiny than used to be the case. Here's that interview. In the larger discussion that we have going on about what is the future of media, and what is the future of advertising in media, and how are we going to make all this work, the answer you're giving with this book is basically we're not. That's the answer. I mean, there, there is the future of media, which is one question, and there's the future of the media business, which is a question that I've answered, I think, uh, years ago, and that is uh, catastrophe. It, the, the growth of mass media and mass advertising it lasted three centuries, and it seemed like um, an entitlement. Not only an entitlement, there was almost like a physical force of the universe, some, some Newtonian force that guaranteed there would always be mass media feeding mass marketing and vice versa. But Lowe, uh, <laughs> come to discover, it was just an accident of history. And what ended that accident of history was the internet. There is now an infinite supply of content out there. That means there's an infinite supply of advertising inventory. That means that drives prices down, 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 down and media, which used to be one of the greatest businesses out there, uh, now they can't afford to keep the lights on. And there is no model, even on the horizon, to suggest that that will ever turn around. The idea behind that is that a lot of what we're going to have is, is direct connections uh, between companies and consumers. There's this overall change going on in business where businesses need to be more responsive to people and less responsive to media environments. That's exactly right. It, it, you know, for most of those 300 years, brands, let's say, could could kind of dictate their own images. They came up with these advertising campaigns and slogans, and they were able to uh, seduce or flatter or entertain or browbeat consumers into submission. But those days are over because we, as consumers, are no longer listening to what brands have to say about themselves. No, we're listening to our friends and our neighbors, our colleagues, our family members, and, and by the way, near total strangers weighing in on brands before we make our moves. Our, our uh, understanding of what a brand is about is informed almost not at all by the brand itself, except for how that brand behaves in the world. We are hearing a lot about brands on Twitter and in social media, Yelp and what have you, and we're drawing our own conclusions. So it, the, the first thing a market has to do in this new era is not be a jerk. I mean, that's job one is not be a jerk because another factor in the digital era is we now can, can see through glass walls into brands. It, we never had that transparency before and now it's been Im imposed on brands. Right, that's, that's one of the interesting messages. It's almost, a, it's a moral message. It's, it's one saying that if you don't actually care about the way you conduct your business and you don't actually care about the way you treat people, uh, that, you'll, that you'll face uh, significant difficulties as a result of that in today's media environment where you could have gotten away with it in the past and you can't paper over it like you could in the past. That's exactly right. And uh, you know, actually, you're about, I, I've done more than a trillion interviews about this book. You're the first person who actually understood that. Yeah, so congratulations. Religion and religious discussions are often, uh, often end up being a large part about in-reach versus outreach. And, and are we really speaking to our core constituencies or are we really speaking to uh, the people we wish were our core constituencies? And how do you think one navigates that difference in an era when you're putting everything out there publicly? Uh, I think one thing that's changed is we now have to understand that we have, with, you, you can't, Ugh, I can't believe I'm using this word, silo constituencies. That, that, because we all have so many. There are so many stakeholders. If you're a brand, there are so many stakeholders. There are, of course, the consumers, your, your customers. There are your prospects, yes. And that's who most brands have talked to. But it turns out there's also your own employees. Uh, there are um, competitors. There are vendors, suppliers. There are, um, there are neighbors, physical neighbors. There are communities that depend on your employees. There, uh, there's the earth. There's the earth itself. It's a stakeholder. Plus, of course, even more important than the earth itself, 
Wall Street. <laughs> so they, these are all constituents and, and we have to understand they are all listening and they are all parsing whatever we do and say in their own separate ways. And if you think that you're going to just go out there and him, I, I'm going to say this to him and this to him and this to him and this to him and think that they're not all getting all of your messages, you're a moron. And here's my interview with Theodore Sassoon, whose book, The New American Zionism, argues with a lot of the conventional wisdom out there about the Jewish community today. So what you've done with this book, uh, at least in part, is, is try to really undermine the conventional wisdom of the organized Jewish world about how Jews are connecting with Israel in America. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the reporting on American Jews' connection to Israel, I think, has been uh, informed by sort of um, conventional Jewish anxiety about the future. Uh, and so a lot of media coverage of the topic, especially over the last five or six years, has, uh, has uh, described the younger generation as alienated from Israel, distant from Israel, disconnected. Uh, in fact, I think what the systematic research shows is that the younger generation of American Jews is heavily engaged with Israel, probably more so even than their parents' generation, but they're engaging with Israel differently than in the past. But just to give a sense of the baseline, that, it, that in, the, in the broader Jewish communal organizations, in the broader Jewish reporting, uh, there's been story after story, and to a degree, several studies, uh, suggesting that the youth are, turning out, are tuning out on Israel. Not, ne not necessarily that they're for or against to a greater degree, but that they just don't care as much. Right, and what's interesting also is that most of those studies, actually, the, really the way they were reported, uh, uh, are, are methodologically really quite flawed. What the, the, the studies that, that have fueled the discourse or the, t the, the, the public conversation about the alienation of American Jewry from Israel show is that for the most part, young adults are less emotionally connected to Israel than Jews who are in their middle age. Uh, and in turn, the folks in the Middle Age are less emotionally connected to Israel than older Jews. What uh, that represents could be, I guess in principle, uh, distancing across the generations from Israel, and that's how most of the media coverage has related to this finding. Uh, but in fact, if you look at surveys of American Jewry, they show that the younger generation is less connected to Israel all the way back as far as we have survey data. So the surveys conducted in uh, the 2000s, in the 1990s, in the 1980s, all show exactly the same snapshot. Right. Emotional so attachment to Israel increases from the youngest group to the middle age group to the oldest group. So if people today were worried mm -hmm. that, uh, that young people are, are distanced from Israel, don't care about Israel when they're in their 20s or their teens. Well, the people who today are in their 40s and 50s and 60s and, and, and express much higher concern for Israel uh, had the same feelings as these teens and 20-somethings when they were teens and 20-somethings. That's, that's exactly right. That's how it's worked over the last 30 years. As American Jews have grown up, they've become more emotionally attached to Israel. But today, uh, in contrast to the past, uh, uh, the younger Jews are much more likely to actually know something about Israel, to travel to the country, either with their family or increasingly uh, through organized educational programs. In regards to looking at historical data, that is such a basic methodological mm -hmm. um, element. And is there a problem with how uh, sociology relates to Jewish organizations or how Jewish organizations co-opt sociology to promote a message that doesn't seem to cohere with the facts. You know, I, I guess I have some ambivalence about this. I think that the reporting that described American Jews as distanced and alienated from Israel was, 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 was uh, misinformed. In fact, I see Jews as more connected to Israel than ever before. Uh, at the same time, I recognize that the propensity of American Jewish organizations to panic about the fate of American Jewry is what, what, what we sociologists call functional. It, it's in a sense a, 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 a useful uh, characteristic of American Jewish organizations because then they, they uh, invest in ways that I think are quite productive. And so, uh, to leave birthright Israel. Because it raises money or you know, because it, No, no, yeah. no, not just because it raises money. And I, 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 don't, uh, I don't view uh, 
uh, the the you know the leaders of American Jewish organizations as as, as cynical uh, operatives who who try to you know use bad news to raise funds. Um, Why not? <laughs> it's, it's, it's not characteristic of the folks that I know. If you think about, uh, uh, are they the ones uh, who write the di direct if mail? If you <laughs> think about the nineteen. Uh, 90 National Jewish Population Study gave rise to a lot of very useful uh, educational initiatives in the Jewish community, in part because it sowed panic about the high rate of intermarriage. Thank you for joining us for this abbreviated web version of Up Close. A reminder, you can see the full episode of Up Close on the Jewish channel on cable. You can also listen to the full episode's audio as a podcast available on iTunes and in all podcast players. The Jewish Channel is available on cable, Time Warner Cable Channel 528, IO Optimum Channel 505, RCN Channel 268, Bright House Channel 330, Verizon Fios Channel 900, Cox Cable Channel 1, Frontier Communications, and on Comcast in the on-demand menu under Premium Channels. For more information, visit TJCTV.com.